inquiry into the political party, the talukas, the districts, and decide on a split in a political party is without jurisdiction. Quite apart from the fact that you're seeking to draw an artificial distinction which does not exist. And I'll come to that judgment. That para of Sadiq Ali, I'll show to your lordships, which is important for this. Now, my lords, kindly have only for that other issue of ex post facto, I'll just sum it up on para 34 of the same judgment. I just need to show that. Here comes the test. The test is here. Yes, yes. 860. 860. Para 34. My lords have that? Yes. As we see it, the act of disqualification occurs on a member voluntarily giving up his membership of a political party or at the point of defiance of the whip issued to him. Therefore, the act that constitutes disqualification in terms of para 2 of the 10 schedule is the act of giving up or defiance of the whip. The fact that a decision in that regard may be taken in the case of voluntarily giving up by the speaker at a subsequent point of time cannot and does not postpone the incurring of disqualification by the act of the legislator. Similarly, the fact that the party could condone the defiance of a whip within 15 days or that the speaker takes decision only thereafter in those cases cannot also pitch the time of disqualification as anything other than the point at which the whip is defied. Therefore, in the background of the object sought to be achieved by the 52nd Amendment of the Constitution and on a true understanding of Para 2 of the 10th Schedule with reference to other paragraphs of the 10th Schedule, the position that emerges is that Speaker has to decide the question of disqualification with reference to the date on which the member voluntarily gives up his membership or defies the whip. It is really a decision ex post facto. It is in this connection that the observation is made that subsequent facts of split seeking a defense of split under the 10 schedule will not be looked at. You will see on the day you went to meet the governor in the facts of this case, some of the MLAs with the opposition party and asked the Samajwadi party to form the government was an act which was squarely hit by 2-1-A. And that is why my Lord, I respectfully submitted and read out instances of Ravi Nayak of this judgment, they were overt acts under 2-1-A. <laughs> Yadurappa's judgment clearly says merely because within the party I say I do not support a particular coalition of a government is not a 2-1-A case at all in the matter. In any case, my lords, who will decide it? Whether it's a 2-1-A case or a 2-1-P case, it still has to be the speaker under Para 6 who is the sole and exclusive constitutional authority to decide it. So A, I'm not a 2-1-A case. B, the Rappa is held mainly because you show support to a government is not a 2-1-A case. And thirdly, my lords, in facts of these cases, the facts which have to be seen are the facts on that date. The ex post facto is in that context. Ex post facto doesn't mean that since your disqualification will be decided on the date you incurred it, all your acts as members of parliament or members of the legislative assembly get annulled in the process. And that is the deduction sought to be drawn now from the words ex post facto in Rana's judgment. Now, my lords, kindly have just last two judgments and I'm done. Kindly have Rameshwar Prashad versus Union of India. Same volume, bookmark 16, para 165. Uh, relevant para 165 is, is at page 521. What's the sorry, page? Sorry, page, page. Uh, page 521. PDF page 521. Uh, same, same, same compilation. Same volume. PDF is 521. Page. My lots of para 165. May I, my lords? Yes. If a political party with the support of other political party or other MLAs takes a claim to form a government and satisfies the governor about its majority to form a stable government, 
the governor cannot refuse formation of the government and override the majority claim because his subjective assessment that the majority was cobbled by illegal and unethical means. No such power has been vested with the governor. Such a power would be against the democratic principles of majority rule. Governor is not an autocratic political ombudsman. If such power is vested in the governor or the president, the consequences can be horrendous. The ground of maladministration by a state government enjoying majority is not available for invoking power of 356. Remedy for corruption or similar ails or evil lies elsewhere and not in Article 356. In the same vein, it has all to be held that power under 10 schedule for defection lies with the Speaker of the House and not with the governor. The power exercised by the Speaker under the 10 schedule is of judicial nature. Dealing with question whether power of disqualification of members of the House vests exclusively with the House to the exclusion of the judiciary, which in Britain was based on certain practices of the legislature, as far as concerned, it was said in Kehoto. It is therefore inappropriate to claim that determinative jurisdiction of the Speaker or the Chairman of the 10 schedule is not a judicial power, is within the non-justiciable legislative area. So the reason I'm citing this judgment, my Lord, is for the fact that for A, of course, we say that the chief minister lost his majority, couldn't, the coalition government could not survive, we within the party were the overwhelming majority, and even if their argument was to be accepted, which I'm not conceding, that, oh, you cobbled it up together in an illegal mean, et cetera, which it is not, it was a perfectly legitimate government which was sworn in, the governor is not to sit on these matters and make his assessments if a probable, plausible coalition or partnership comes before it. And says, because ultimately at the end of the day, someone has to head a government, my lords. My lord, the Chief Justice posed a question to me yesterday. After the ch sitting Chief Minister resigns, someone has to be sworn in. Now, if a set of people come and show that they have a sizable or an overwhelming majority, he says, go and test it on the floor of the house. And what time does he give? Two days to do it. And your lodges have normally said those cases where you're given a month, two months, and that is... That is uh, scope for horse trading, etc. He immediately calls for a floor test in exercise of his constitutional duties and obligations and say, prove your majority. If you are the new <coughs> government which is taking its claim within the same political party, now in coalition with another political party who is a pre poll ally, what is wrong with that decision of the governor within two days? Now, my lords, kindly have lastly, Sadek Ali for a completely different proposition. Volume 2, uh, Volume 2, Bookmark 39, volume. PDF 85 at 98. Can we repeat this? Yes. Volume 2, Bookmark 39, Bookmark 39, starts at PDF page 85. Uh, the judgment starts at page PDF 85. Relevant para at PDF 98. Relevant para at PDF 98. Para? 98. Uh, para, para 27, page 98. <clears throat> well, it's before I proceed to read, my lord, the Chief Justice, can I? Before I proceed to read the judgment, my lord, the reason I'm citing it is I right through said apart from all other arguments that you cannot segregate the two. One of the principal arguments for recognition of a political party under 6A and 6B of the symbols order, those provisions I have not read, of 6A and 6B for a continued recognition. And recognition of a political party is the number of percentage of votes polled by MLAs, MPs, its strength in the House. These are all relevant factors. So what happens in the legislature can't be just kept aside. That's a relevant consideration within it. So to say that they're two completely distinct things and political party is distinct and legislature party is distinct is not correct. And that is what Sadiq Ali also notices in this paragraph is what I wanted to show it for. The other paras, my lords, I'm not bothering your lordships on all those powers of the EC because we are not getting into that. Uh, it may be mentioned that according to para six of the symbols order, one of the factors which may be taken into account in treating a political party as a recognized political party is the number of seats secured by that party in the House of People or the State Legislature uh, Assembly or the number of votes polled by the contesting candidate set up by the such party. The number of seats secured by a political party or the number of votes cast in favor of the candidate <clears throat> of a political party can be a relevant consideration for recognition of a political party. One is at a loss to understand as to how number of seats in parliament and state legislatures held by supporters of a group of political party can be considered to be irrelevant. 
<clears throat> we can consequently discover no error in approach of the commission in applying the rule of majority and numerical strength for determining as to which of the two groups <clears throat> of um, Congress J and Congress O was the Congress party for the purpose of para 15 of the symbols order. Now that is a separate matter which your lodges are dealing with where this has also become one of the considerations and this para of Sadiq Ali in that other matter that your lodges are dealing with. That this is one of the indicators, valid indicators available. So to come and say that you've only done it in the legislature party, there's nothing in the political party. And there, their entire argument, my lords, was with great respect that on 18th you had a meeting and you showed the minutes of 27th. It's factually wrong. I'll argue it there in that matter. There are two separate meetings. There are factually incorrect statements made that you had a meeting on the 18th, but there are no minutes, there are no signatures. That's not the subject matter of the reference before your lodges at all. And I'll argue it there. There are two separate meetings. Requisite members attended it. And please do not confuse the minutes of one meeting with the holding of another meeting. My lords, I'm very, very grateful. Your lodges have been extremely Thank kind you. and patient. Thank I'm you. extremely grateful, my lords, and the three notes I've given. I'm yes. extremely grateful. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. We'll now argue, Mr. Jitnani will argue. Well, I'm told. <laughs>